Chapter 3 Sunset Your duties today are done. For now, or at least until you're next called upon, you're free to relax. And what better way to do so than sit down by the mess hall with Felicia as she struggles through her odds and ends? You offer to help her out when you can, not wanting her to start feeling upset or despondent given her lack of domestic skills. Throwing knives, using a healing staff, Felicia is quite the battle maiden, but carrying tea and shining shoes? Such typical housekeeping tasks cause her grief to no end. Do you need some help over there, Felicia? You look like you're having a hard time. No, it's fine, I promise. Felicia sets the shoes aside, screwing the lid tight on the leather polish. I'm about ready to put these away. She doesn't put them away as much as throw them. Tactful, as always. With an oops, the maid finishes tidying up. You're left to bask in the full moon's glow overhead, decorated by a collection of magical twinkling stars. It's been a long time since you've been able to enjoy a sight so calming. Not since you left home in Izami to join the army, you remember? You sat on the porch of a small tavern with a busty innkeeper's daughter holding you by the arm. A pretty lass, long black hair, and the kindest nature. You always look so lonely, Keiji. She told you with a peck on the cheek. I suppose lost is what I meant to say. Like you're searching for something. Sadly, you don't remember the girl's name. She was one of many you romanced in the dusk of your teenage years. But her deep sense for people, the way she read your feelings so deeply that day, forever stayed within your memories. Lost. You whisper, gazing into the ripples in your tankard of wine. The sweet-tasting red liquid provides you with nothing in the way of answers. Fingers caress your skin. Felicia's digits atop your own snaps you back from the musings of the past. This servant, Corin's retainer, she's so gentle in her manners, and there's a way she's looking at you, with blue eyes, sapphires. They're strangely hypnotic. Nobody else in camp gets such warm looks from Felicia. You're the only one. Are you all right, Keiji? You seem awfully distant tonight. There's something wrong, isn't there? Typical. You can't help but reflect. For all of her drawbacks, Felicia is a strong judge of character. Short-sighted in some ways, lacking common sense when it comes to many things, but not in understanding, especially for her friends and comrades. Be it you, Lord Takumi, Kaze, or Lady Sakura. She's emotional, something of a crybaby, even. But loyal and loving. In a friendly way, of course. After all, there's no way she sees anything of note in someone like you. You're a swordsman, with a tendency for wandering, nothing more. I'm fine, you assure Felicia with a terse, glassy smile. You couldn't fake it more if you tried. Just... thinking. And Felicia's considerate question becomes something of a serious cause for concern. She's worried, and you hate it when she frowns, because she never looks angry. She doesn't have it in her. She usually ends up with this rainy, disheartened vibe, like a cat left outside in the cold without her owner. You wouldn't be drinking if you weren't troubled, Keiji. How long have I known you now? Long enough, you recall. And unlike plenty of the transient individuals who have come and gone over the years, you remember exactly how many months it's been since Felicia fell, literally, after tripping face first out of the mess hall doors, into your life. It was an amusing affair, in hindsight. The maid's been by your side ever since, even more so now that you're both in direct service to the princess. What are you, my friend or my nursemaid? You tease Felicia, going in for another mouthful of much-needed drink. Come on, Keiji. But she stops you, whipping her hand from yours and along the length of your shared rickety table, taking away your tankard. Lately you've been so distant from me, and your friends. Subaki asked about you the other day. I didn't quite know what to tell him. Talk to me, would you? You've done enough soul-searching over the passing weeks. This morning, in your tent, alone with Corin, 
You found that answer. The question is, will Felicia understand if you try explaining? You imagine so. Very well, if you insist. Light dragon, spare me. A roll of the eyes on your part, and Felicia gives back your drink in return, smirking as smugly as sin. I swear, you're more like a wife with the way you fret. Thump! Felicia slides out of her chair, colliding with the floor, groaning in pain. A curled-up little ball across the mess hall's wooden decking. Wife? She winces, rubbing her behind and crawling, slowly, painfully, upright. You offer a helpful hand, supporting the newly bruised girl, quite the paperweight, into another chair. One that isn't smashed into splinters. Beneath those clothes, she must be covered in cuts and scrapes, you imagine. Especially given the way she falls around. You're not fair, Keiji, picking on me. Heaven smiles upon you. Now is the perfect time to change the subject before Felicia ties herself into a bundle of nerves worrying about you. Again. And you know just the subject to keep her mind from your least favorite subject, you. I take it you still haven't had any luck telling your crush how you truly feel. Am I right in my guess? If Alicia were any redder, she'd glow like a fireball. I... I KG. She hides her face in the mask of her hands. No, I haven't. You make it out to be so simple, but... But what? You keep up the conversation, unwilling to let your dear, hopeless friend back out of it like she did the last time. Love is a simple game at times. Not that you've always had the purest love life, but Felicia deserves to be happy. Whoever this enigma is, this mystery man, he needs to know how she feels. You should let your heart be known, dear Felicia. I can't! Felicia sighs exhaustedly and sprawls out across the table, nearly knocking over your wine. I'm an oaf, Keiji. A silly, dreamy-eyed oath. My mother once japed that I'd fall and headbutt the first man I kissed. And she was right. You can't help but marvel at how pretty Felicia is when she acts like this, despite her drawbacks. Timid, shy, and innocent. You want to help her through this rut of bad luck, especially if she's truly so club-footed. Is it even possible to headbutt somebody in the heat of a kiss? You butted him? Truly? Tis not some sort of practical joke you're playing on me. No. I was seventeen. His name was Enward. We were in the kitchen making Lady Corrin's dinner. I'd had an eye on him for a while. He confessed to me first. Felicia whines, bumping her head against the table in defeat with a thunk. We'd finished cleaning up after dessert was served. He came close to claim my lips, and I stumbled. Broke his nose. There, there. You pat the teary, disheartened miss on the shoulder. A tiny comfort, if any. She breaks from her doldrums and takes your hand in hers. You pause, stricken by how content Felicia feels being beside you like this, but quickly move on. Maybe you should embrace the next man you kiss. What's a kiss between lovers if you don't share closeness? Felicia's cheeks surged from red-hot fireball to raging inferno. She stammered out, flustered gibberish, pulling away from you abruptly, isolated in her chair like an island in the middle of the sea. Maybe I'll do that. You don't want to lose him to another, do you? Perhaps a gentle prod in the right direction will help in ending Felicia's fears. We're in a time of war. Commoner and noble alike search for what fragile happiness they can grasp with such dark clouds looming overhead. If you don't tell him soon, he might be gone for good, wedded, or worse, in the bed of another girl. N no I love being in his company. I... I feel so much for him that I can hardly contain myself. Bold and brave, Felicia stops with her sulking and stands tall, proud, inflating her ample chest with a deep breath. In fact, in fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. Oh, the plot thickens. Now I'm interested. You down the last dregs of your wine. Indulge me, fair lady. I must say I find myself curious. 
I've never seen you invigorated like this before. It suits you, I'll admit. I'm going to tell him. Felicia clasped her hands together against her beating heart. A whisper. A prayer. Words unheard by your ears, meant for the shining stars above. I'll find my courage and show him my love before the next clash with Nor. You'll see, KG. Y you'll see. Her flames don't last long. Felicia fizzled out, shy and mousy as usual. Those eyes of hers again, so bright like swirling pools, bringing you nearer and nearer, taking you into her inner ocean. Why doesn't she eye at anyone else the way she eyes at you? Foolish. What's come over me? You shake yourself free of their hold, of their mesmeric charm, desperately in search for alcohol you know isn't there. Something to cool you, anything to quell this spell. It's hard to explain, even harder to find the sentiment, but you swear she's marking you. I believe you. You answer, releasing the top buttons of your robes, fanning yourself to ease the flashes of warmth beneath your shirt. I do. You know one thing clearly, despite your usual distance from all but the physical comforts, minus Lady Corin. Whoever Felicia desires, behind her shroud of shyness, he's going to be a very lucky man when she eventually tells him how she feels. Hey! And that's when Felicia pipes up. You distracted me! We're supposed to be talking about you! That we are, milady. Hands up, because you know you've been cornered. You get back to the prior topic. Oh, how you loathe talking about yourself beyond compare. Felicia tries to show her irritation. Sadly for her, she can't even look angry when she tries, not unless it's something exceedingly serious. You stand to meet the maid. I have a question. One you might be able to help me with. A qu question Felicia folds her arms behind her back, tippy-tapping her shoe against the decking, surprisingly anxious. For me? You were right, you admit. The moon again meets you with its welcoming shine. About something bothering me. In truth, I felt as though I lacked direction. Always did. I left home young and never found my way. Life was naught but empty passion and fighting until recently. A white-haired, fair-skinned dragon of a woman tore down the chains of your willful solitude. She stole you at a simple glance, but freedom brought another problem you found. Felicia. You sigh heavily. I've met a woman. Not my usual sort, either. She's part of the army. Really? You nod, despite Felicia being so darn loud about it. Why the shock? Was it really that big of a surprise? You're not exactly subtle with your affections, or didn't feel the cause to be until now. We're close, and getting closer. She fills me with such a sense of completion, a wholeness. But whenever I'm away from her, that dead weight, that lack of direction comes back. It's going to sound childish, but it's like being with her gives me all the strength I need. What does such a feeling mean? Love. Felicia closes, the gap now mere inches. You, my dearest KG. She drapes her arms around your shoulders, blushing like a summer flower in bloom. Are in love. I know the sensation too well. The scent of roses makes your head swirl. Felicia's perfume is intoxicating. Or is it her shampoo? You can hardly tell, but if the two of you get any nearer, then... Your noses touch. Being in love is wonderful. Felicia's breath tickles against your cheek. But at the last second she draws back, her face hidden behind strands of hair. I, am. Um, I don't know how to act romantically. My advice must be awful. Got a little carried away there, sorry. And without another word on the matter of romance, Felicia retreats. I'll see you tomorrow, KG. You're alone before you know it, watching as Felicia draws further and further from view. The doors to the mess hall slide open and you're left with something to feel cheery about, despite the truly head-scratching confusion. Before you, Hoshido's most skilled warrior to ever sally forth into battle. Tall, handsome, 
confident, probably the only man with an ego large enough to fell a whole band of bandits with one hand tied behind his back, not to mention the one and only with enough pride to wear his armor like this, while everyone else is done with their tasks for the night, be it drawing water from wells or chasing after the royalty. Tsubaki, you give a bow. Yes, he's your superior, but that doesn't stop you from feeling happy to see him. Retainers have final say over the common troops, but such things have never bothered him too strongly. If it isn't Keiji, stop with the rank and respect. You're just the person I was hoping to find. I've been waiting for you. A spark flies between the two of you. You're both ready for the challenge ahead. Drinking time? You inquire. Tsubaki turns right around and opens the mess hall's sliding doors again. Looks like you'll both be haunting the wine cellar until the early hours of morning. Your number one choice for killing time, apart from wagering a good handful of coin on fights and thrills. Drinking time. After such a heavy discussion with Felicia, another drink wouldn't go amiss. Or maybe three.